I'm talking about uh, low carbon chronic disease. Um, and um, what I want to do really is, is just review some of the, uh, the literature. So it's going to be a bit uh, sort of data full, uh, this talk. Um, but uh, I think it's important just to give people an update on where we're at with the role of low carb in chronic disease. Now, here are my disclosures. Um, I'm involved with a not-for-profit called Sugar by Half, uh, a program Defeat Diabetes, and uh, I have a, a book out there as well. So these are some of the, uh, the chronic diseases that uh, um, there is evidence for uh, um, low-carb use in these. And uh, for the next three hours, I'm going to go through these. And uh, <laughs> Sorry, Rod, so only joking, only joking. Um, but obviously, uh, a number of, uh, of these have been covered uh, either in this, this uh, conference or in previous conferences. So, um, so obesity, diabetes, atherosclerosis, we just heard a bit about GI, renal we heard about yesterday, uh, PCOS I was going to talk about, but it seems uh, sports physicians are not allowed to talk about those, so I can't talk about that. So I'm going to uh, cover, uh, cover that, and cancer's been talked about too. So I'm going to cover the, uh, those bottom uh, ones. And just to give you some of the evidence for the use of uh, a low-carb, stroke ketogenic diet in these, uh, in these conditions. So let's start with, uh, with epilepsy. And uh, we had an anniversary last year that we missed because of COVID. It was 100 years since uh, the ketogenic diet has been used in the, in the management of childhood uh, epilepsy. And that's the original paper uh, back in, uh, in 1921. I remember it well. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, it was interesting. As you know, I mean, it, it was popular then. And then, of course, drugs came on the scene and, and it was forgotten. And uh, we went crazy about, uh, about drugs. And then uh, it was really not until sort of the, the 1990s probably, and uh, uh, many of you would know the story of, uh, of Charlie, uh, little Charlie Abrahams, who was uh, um, in 1993, I think it was, he was 11 months old. He was the son of a, uh, of a fairly wealthy Hollywood producer. Uh, he was having multiple seizures and um, had tried every medication and seen every specialist in, uh, in town. And as a last resort, they decided to try a ketogenic diet. And uh, from the, the day he started the, uh, the diet, his seizures uh, ceased. He uh, continued the diet for a few years, had no seizures, and now is, uh, is uh, on a normal diet and has had no seizures. So um, that sort of uh, became very well known. Uh, there was a Hollywood movie made out of it with Meryl Streep, and they started the Charlie Foundation. Uh, his parents started this uh, Charlie Foundation for ketogenic therapies, which is uh, very widely used. So there's been a lot of evidence now for the use of a ketogenic diet in childhood epilepsy. Um, and uh, there are a couple of hundred centres around the world uh, for ketogenic uh, therapies, including uh, all the major sort of uh, children's hospitals uh, in Australia and, and around the world. There is a, a ketogenic diet ward, in fact, in, uh, in, in these hospitals. So it's very well accepted in um, drug-resistant childhood epilepsy. And this is where we're at as far as uh, the latest Cochrane review goes, is that uh, most effective individuals can eliminate seizures with medication, um, but about 30% can't. And uh, of those, a significant number of those can, be, uh, can uh, cure their uh, resistant epilepsy with the use of a ketogenic diet. So there's a, a proportion of those. Uh, but that's in children. What about in adults? Is there much... Uh, evidence about the use of a ketogenic diet in adult epilepsy. Uh, and here's a study that shows a, uh, um, a positive evidence of the use of a ketogenic diet in adults with intractable epilepsy and refractory status epilepticus. Um, and there's a number of other uh, diseases that have been shown to be uh, effective. And uh, this is a, there are various sort of uh, subtypes of epilepsies uh, that are shown in the, uh, the, di in the diagram there that uh, have all been shown to be uh, effectively treated with, uh, with a ketogenic diet. So I think it's a really, uh, it's a really important um, tool in the management of epilepsy. Now it's interesting, isn't it, that you know, uh, 100 years ago we realised that a ketogenic diet was effective in a neurological disorder. Now you'd think you would have thought that maybe someone, you know, 100 years ago or in the last 100 years has said, well, hang on a minute, if a ketogenic diet worked in one neurological disease, maybe we should have a look at it in some other neurological diseases. Reasonable? 
And yet, nobody has really looked seriously at ketogenic diet in other neurological diseases until very recently. So let's talk about the, uh, the neurodegenerative diseases, uh, in particular Parkinson's and, uh, and Alzheimer's. And um, as we've, uh, has been stated, uh, Alzheimer's, 80% of, uh, of diabetics, 80% uh, of people with Alzheimer's have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes. It's probably 100%, it's only 80% is recognised. Now the problem with Alzheimer's, of course, is that drugs don't work. Billions and billions of dollars have been spent in trying to find a drug that will help Alzheimer's. And the sum total of that is zero. There have been none that have been shown to be effective. Probably because they're looking at the wrong thing, as we, uh, as we heard earlier, but they don't work. So what is the potential treatment for Alzheimer's? Well, there have been a few uh, studies. Here's a, uh, a systematic review of the RCTs looking at the uh, effects of ketogenic diet in Alzheimer's. And the overall uh, conclusion of that systematic review is that the use of keto neurotherapeutics um, were pr uh, proved effective in improving general cognition using, uh, using scales. And that um, the ketogenic therapy also improved episodic and secondary memory. Now, there have been lots of studies, none, not of great quality, but I just want to focus on, uh, on two or three of the, uh, of the good studies looking at ketogenic diet in, uh, in Alzheimer's. This is a study by, uh, by Brand looking at a modified Atkins uh, diet, which is broadly a ketogenic diet, um, and they found that uh, there was a large um, and statistically significant increase in memory, a memory composite score. Now, unfortunately, they, uh, a lot of their, their patients dropped out of this study, so it finished up being a very small study, but it, uh, it did show an, an effect. The next study is a study by, uh, by Taylor, um, which showed that uh, a, a three-month medium-chain triglyceride supplemented uh, ketogenic diet, uh, followed by a one-month washout, um, had a positive effect on... Uh, on the various Alzheimer's disease scales that, uh, that people use to, uh, to determine efficacy. Uh, interestingly, the different grades of, uh, here's uh, the, the details here, the different grades of, uh, of uh, um, Alzheimer's in that the more severe ones weren't able to continue, weren't able to, uh, uh, to use the diet and so dropped out, but in the, uh, in the, the less severe scales, it proved to be, uh, to be very effective. And then, of course, the, uh, the gold standard uh, trial that uh, we heard about earlier this morning from, uh, from Matthew Phillips, our uh, guest from New Zealand. And uh, this uh, was a study that, uh, as he mentioned, had 26 patients with clinically confirmed diagnosis of, uh, of Alzheimer's disease. They were randomly uh, assigned to a modified ketogenic or usual diet. And uh, <clears throat> it was a crossover trial, which is probably the most uh, effective way of, of determining efficacy and uh, there were various outcomes uh, of that uh, that were measured and um, as he mentioned this morning uh, that the top one is uh, is cognition uh, they all improved so it's cognition function and quality of life the, co the cognition improvement was uh, not statistically significant but it was still there and the uh, the improvement in function and uh, quality of life were statistically significant and so this is a uh, this is a real breakthrough sort of study, I believe, and that uh, it's the first randomised controlled trial that showed uh, an efficacy of a ketogenic diet. Now, I would suggest that if that study had been a drug study, <laughs> the results would have been on the front page of every newspaper in the world. Matt would probably be a billionaire by now, and he'd probably get a Nobel Prize. Instead, until today, had any of you heard of that study? Kiwi had, of course, you know, it's, it's the only decent thing that's ever come out of New Zealand. But, uh, <laughs> but none of us more sensible people had even heard of it. <laughs> it's just remarkable, isn't it? it? It just sort of sums up the whole, uh, you know, that we've talked about all, all today, really, about how this, we completely ignore the simple remedies such as nutrition. And uh, you know, we're obsessed as a profession with drugs and surgery and so on. It's really sad. But uh, this was a magnificent uh, study by, by Matt, and uh, he should be congratulated. All right, Parkinson's disease. Um, it's, uh, you know, 
very debilitating disease and, and it seems to be getting more and more common. Um, I'm, I'm sure most of you who are in general practice would, would agree with that, that we're seeing more Parkinson's disease than we, uh, than we did maybe 10 or 20 years ago. And there's always been a sort of an association uh, talked about between sugar and diabetes and, and, and Parkinson's. There's nothing, uh, it's nothing new. But uh, there have been very few studies, again, looking at low-carb ketogenic diets in Parkinson's. The first one was back in 2005. Uh, Van Italy um, looked at, uh, at, at the treatment of Parkinson's with a diet-induced uh, hyperketonemia, as they call it. It was just a feasibility study, but um, they had five of uh, the seven volunteers with, uh, with Parkinson's, uh, and they had a, uh, a, good, uh, a good result. So that, you would think, you know, that, that would have sort of stimulated, you know, hundreds of, uh, of, of research studies and papers, but no, no, nothing, uh, nothing seemed to happen. And uh, the next paper of, of interest, really, was, uh, was not until, you know, sort of uh, 15 years later by, by Krikorian. And uh, they, it was a smallish study, and he had... Uh, seven in, in each group. So they had uh, those with Parkinson's disease, did an eight-week nutritional intervention, randomly uh, assigned to either a high carbohydrate, uh, typical of the Western dietary pattern, or a low-carb ketogenic regime. And uh, they assessed uh, changes in, uh, in cognitive performance, motor function, etc. cetera. And, uh, and these are the, uh, the, the results. And relative to the high-carbohydrate diet, the low-carbohydrate group demonstrated improvement in lexical access and, uh, and memory, as well as a trend for reduced interference uh, in, in memory, uh, as well as other metabolic uh, improvements. So again, showing that uh, that may be of, uh, of some use. Uh, some of the, uh, the mechanism, um, you know, I'd uh, like to think that I understand that, but I'll, uh, get, uh, doctor, I'll get Dr. Mason to explain that to you. Um, but, um, you know, there, there is certainly, uh, you know, legitimate uh, explanations as to how a ketogenic diet can, uh, can help in, in something like Parkinson's disease. And here we go, here's another paper by Matthew Phillips. What a coincidence. And uh, Matthew uh, looked also at Parkinson's disease and this was a, uh, a pilot RCT to compare an eight week low fat, high carbohydrate diet versus a ketogenic diet in a uh, hospital clinic of, uh, of uh, um, Parkinson's disease patients, uh, 44 commenced the, the diets, 38 completed the study, which is a pretty good uh, completion, uh, completion rate. And uh, these are the results. I won't uh, sort of uh, get too complicated, but let's look at uh, part one. So these are the different uh, Parkinson's disease uh, symptoms are, are divided up into different parts. And these are the, what they call the non-motor daily living experiences, which are, are probably the most relevant or the most important sort of clinically or the patients will tell you they're the most important symptoms that uh, that are affected in uh, in Parkinson's disease and that's the group that were really uh, significantly improved by this uh, by this ketogenic diet they're also the group that uh, that respond least to uh, to drug therapy um, so this was extremely uh, extremely valuable so uh, you know again just a great result from uh, from Matthew's uh, Matthew's group and uh, as I said that sh shows the you know as he said this morning it was an 11% improvement in the low-fat group and a 41% improvement in, uh, in those baseline uh, part one scores in the ketogenic group. And uh, the symptoms that it were improved the, the most were urinary problems, pain, fatigue, sleepiness and cognitive impairment, which are obviously the day-to-day -day, uh, symptoms that, uh, that concern people with Parkinson's. So here we've got another study from, uh, from Matthew's group that uh, shows the effectiveness of a ketogenic diet. And you'd like to think that there'll be more, more studies as a result of, uh, of these. All right, multiple sclerosis is an interesting uh, condition um, that, uh, you know, again, also, I think, seems to be getting more, uh, more common. Um, and there's been quite a, quite a bit of uh, research done on uh, low-carb ketogenic diets in multiple sclerosis. Uh, the, one that, the study that's always quoted is this, uh, is this CHOICE study, which is actually in a, in a uh, diet-mimicking fasting uh, study, um, which uh, we, was discussed earlier on. At, uh, um, and they looked at, uh, this was a randomised uh, three-arm pilot trial looking at the safety and feasibility of this fasting uh, mimicking uh, diet or, uh, or ketogenic treatment. And uh, they had 60 patients randomly assigned, uh, 20 in, uh, in, each, uh, in each group. Um, and so they did a control diet and then they did the uh, uh, 
ketogenic diet for six months or a single cycle of a modified uh, fasting mimicking diet for seven days followed by a Mediterranean diet and looked at a whole bunch of, uh, of factors. And uh, again, there's a plausible explanation as to why this fasting mimicking diet uh, might work, which uh, I don't understand either. But, uh, um, the next study was a, a pilot study of a ketogenic diet, uh, again, which showed uh, impressive results, showed that it was safe and feasible. So it's interesting, isn't it, that all these studies, you know, feel duty bound to sort of talk about safety and feasibility. Uh, I mean, how many more times do we have to prove that a ketogenic diet is safe and feasible? But, you know, anyway, um, we've got to keep, uh, keep proving that because that's what we get criticised for and, uh, and it's well tolerated. And this uh, diet improved fatigue and depression. In, uh, in multiple sclerosis. Um, and again, same, uh, same author um, showed again that over a six month study period, there are improvements in all those, uh, in all those different uh, parameters. So, you know, some pretty, uh, pretty impressive uh, results. Yeah, and again, another study, I want to keep going all these studies, but another study, that a pilot study that showed improvement in fatigue and, and so on. So there's a, a pattern there, isn't there, within all these uh, studies. And uh, again, uh, another intervention that showed uh, reduction in, uh, in neurofilament light chain, which is one of the uh, parameters in, uh, in, in this. So many of you would, uh, would, know, about, uh, would know Terry Wiles, uh, the story, Terry Wiles' story. Um, Terry Wiles is a, uh, an American physician who, uh, was, who suffered from multiple sclerosis and was bound to a wheelchair and was very debilitated. Um, she uh, started a ketogenic diet and, uh, or a, what she refers to as a, as a modified paleo diet and uh, basically has made almost a, a full recovery. And she's got a great TED talk that many of you might, might have seen and uh, an excellent book uh, called The Wilds Protocol that's quite a uh, quite inspiring story. And uh, just an amazing improvement from, uh, from someone. And obviously as a physician, she has a really good insight into, uh, into this. Um, so Terry's been involved in a number of research projects about multiple sclerosis. Uh, initially a small uh, uncontrolled pilot study that showed significant improvement in fatigue. Uh, then a number of multimodal uh, interventions which included uh, dietary uh, intervention that again showed, uh, showed improvement. And then she looked at um, a, an RCT evaluation of what, again what she called this modified Paleo, uh, paleo dietary intervention um, and found significant improvements in the, in the FSS, which is the fatigue severity scale. You can see over here that uh, quite a dramatic improvement post, uh, post treatment in this uh, fatigue uh, scale. So, you know, again, um, improvements in fatigue seem very common in, uh, in, all, these, uh, in all these conditions. Um, again, interestingly, she looked uh, here at a, um, a comparison of a ketogenic diet and um, a modified Paleolithic uh, diet. Um, there's actually not a huge difference between them, but uh, she found that both uh, achieved um, uh, clinical improvements um, and that uh, uh, possibly more in the, the modified Paleolithic diet than, uh, than in, the, in the ketogenic uh, diet. And uh, the last study that she's been involved in was comparing the Swank diet, which is a, a low saturated fat diet, and her own modified Paleolithic uh, diet, and both were associated with, uh, with clinically meaningful within group reductions in fatigue and improvements in, in quality of life, but uh, the, the saturated fat uh, had slightly better results. Uh, sorry, the, the paleo had uh, slightly better results. So again, you know, small studies, uh, you know, the, it's crying out for a, a large um, randomised controlled trial to be done, but, you know, as we know, there's no money for, uh, for clinical trials in nutrition. Uh, if you want to have it do a drug trial, there's lots of money for that. But uh, very difficult to get uh, good quality research done in, uh, in, in nutrition. And uh, finally, I just want to talk about, uh, about mental illness. Uh, it's been um, alluded to uh, earlier today that uh, there's some really interesting work done being done and uh, the role of the ketogenic uh, low-carb diets in a variety of, uh, of mental illnesses. And um, I just want to quickly go through the current sort of state of the evidence in those because I think it's one of the most interesting f areas of, uh, of a ketogenic diet. So if we look at, uh, at autism, where it was mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier, there have been a few studies done on, uh, on the role of a ketogenic diet in children with, uh, with autistic behaviour. 
This first one was a, uh, a pilot uh, carried out in 30 children uh, aged but, uh, um, uh, between four and something with, uh, with autistic behaviour uh, for six months with continuous uh, administration for, uh, for four weeks and then interrupted by, by two-week diet-free uh, intervals. Um, interestingly, uh, seven patients couldn't tolerate the diet uh, and uh, some others uh, did it for, uh, for a short period of time. Um, so of the 18 who adhered to the diet, Improvements were recorded in all of, uh, of the uh, parameters um, and uh, particularly, uh, so significant improvement in, in two patients, average improvement in, uh, in eight and minor improvement in eight, but all improvement in all patients with, uh, with autism. And I don't think there are any drugs that could uh, replicate that, uh, that result. Uh, this was a case control study in 45 children with, uh, with autism spectrum disorder, uh, looking at a uh, modified Atkins uh, gluten-free, casein-free diet uh, compared to a controlled baseline uh, diet. And, uh, and again, uh, the modified Atkins uh, diet was, um, was the most effective for uh, speech, social and cognition parameters and the gluten-free casein diet uh, best for speech and uh, behavioural parameters. But uh, the study found that the modified Atkins diet was superior in the, uh, the overall childhood autism rating scale that, uh, that is used. Um, so in this, uh, in this study, uh, again, a, um, another uh, study of 15 children uh, with uh, looking at a modified gluten-free uh, ketogenic diet uh, children significantly improved in the uh, comparison score, uh, total and social effect categories of the autism diagnostic observation schedule, which is again a scale that's uh, commonly used in these uh, research tools, and uh, an improved um, imitation and body function in the, in the childhood autism rating scale. So, um, you know, again, some really uh, significant results in, uh, in autism that, uh, again, cries out for a large uh, trial. Now, um, I was in the uh, in the coffee queue at the uh, university uh, the other day, and um, lady uh, lady came up to me and said, uh, "Professor Brooklyn." I said, "Yeah, that's right." She said, uh, "I enjoyed your lecture the other day." I said, "Oh, that's nice." First person to ever say that, and then um, <laughs> and she said, oh, "But that's not what I want to talk to you about." And I thought, "Oh God, here we go. You know what have I done? Um, what did I say in the lecture or whatever?" Um, and she said, "No, no, no. My husband and I are, are huge cricket fans, and because of your involvement with uh, with cricket, um, we uh, we changed our diet." And uh, I just wanted to say my husband uh, has been bipolar all his life and uh, he's now off, uh, off all his medication and uh, you've changed our lives. And, uh, and I thought, you know, well, I mean... Uh, oh, you've got to have one success in 10 years anyway. Uh, but, um, but, you know, that, I mean, that uh, alerted me to, to the fact that, uh, you know, bipolar was not a condition I'd really ever thought about uh, dietary treatment. But... Um, so I went and, uh, and had a look and, uh, and to see whether it was a nice coffee and I had a, uh, to see what evidence there was for a, for a ketogenic diet in, uh, in bipolar. And very little evidence. I mean, there's some case studies, basically. Here's, here's a, a study of two women with, uh, with type 2 bipolar disorder um, and uh, they experienced mood stabilisation that exceeded anything they'd have achieved with, with medication. And as those of you who... who Look after people with bipolar would know that medication is very unsatisfactory in the, in, in the treatment of bipolar. Um, so uh, that was uh, encouraging um, and uh, they had no ad adverse uh, effects as well. And really it's only been sort of case studies. Here's, uh, here's uh, another one, uh, you know, when you, uh, which was just a letter to the editor of, of a case study and then, uh, then another case study as well. So again, very little in the way of, of good uh, research, good evidence. But again, a suggestion here about how the, uh, um, how the ketogenic diet may help as a metabolic therapy in, uh, in these mood disorders and so on, which seemed to, uh, to uh, make a bit of sense to, to me. Um, as far as uh, schizophrenia goes, Really, only case studies. Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing. No good uh, research uh, projects in uh, in case studies. And finally, uh, depression, which uh, you know, for many years we were told was a uh, was a chemical disorder and uh, was all about serotonin deficiency and so on. Uh, I think we all agree now that uh, the serotonin theory has been uh, debunked, and uh, it's not quite as simple as that. And that probably explains why the uh, the main. Antidepressant medications are, uh, to, to say the least, uh, disappointing in their, in their efficacy. 
There is some evidence of uh, a ketogenic diet in uh, in, uh, in depression, um, it's uh, one study was because we know that depression is quite common in uh, diabetes and type 2 diabetes, and uh, this showed that a, uh, um, a uh, ketogenic diet or a carbohydrate restriction was very effective in the, uh, in the uh, management of these depression symptoms in, uh, in type 2 uh, diabetics. Uh, and uh, the main study probably that's been done on, uh, on the ketogenic diet in, uh, in, uh, in refractory mental illness was uh, published just recently by uh, Danan and, uh, and some other well-known co-authors that you would, you would recognise, Eric Westman and Laura Saslo and, and George Reid. And uh, Danan uh, did, looked at um, uh, 28 inpatients, uh, 12 with bipolar disorder, 6 with major depression and 10 with, uh, with schizophrenia and uh, they all went on a ketogenic diet and uh, as you can see there 100% uh, of, uh, of symptoms, improve, symptoms improved in 100% of the patients. So all of those three groups uh, symptoms improved, 43% uh, achieved uh, clinical remission, 64% um, were, uh, were discharged on, uh, on um, uh, medication and so on. So, you know, very, very effective uh, treatment. But again, you know, so little uh, research done on, uh, on this. Um, we have our own uh, uh, depression researchers. Uh, this is uh, Felice Jacker, who's the uh, uh, Professor of Nutritional Psychiatry at, uh, at Deakin University, uh, does some fantastic uh, work on uh, the role of diet in, in nutrition. She doesn't call it a ketogenic diet, she sort of refers to it more as a Mediterranean diet, but from what I can see it's pretty much, uh, pretty much low carb and, uh, and she's done some really uh, great research and has an excellent book that I would recommend, uh, Brain Changer by, uh, by uh, Professor Felice Jacker. So um, Nick Norritz uh, did this nice uh, diagram of uh, a summary, summarising the ketogenic diet as a metabolic treatment for, uh, for me mental illness and uh, I think that, uh, that sums it up pretty well. So I think it's early days, there's not a lot of, uh, of evidence but the evidence that is there is very encouraging and very positive and uh, I think I'm sure we can all, uh, those of us who um, see these sort of patients would all vouch for the fact that uh, we do see improvements in, uh, in mental health uh, illness with, uh, with a ketogenic diet or low-carb diet. So why then does, you know, all these different chronic diseases all seem to respond well to, uh, to a ketogenic diet? And, and well, why might that be? Well, I guess the two things that are generally accepted now as being primary sort of causes, if you like, or influences in chronic disease are insulin resistance and inflammation. And we know that insulin resistance is uh, very important in, uh, in uh, all sorts of different, uh, different diseases, um, chronic diseases, and obviously we know that a, uh, a low-carb ketogenic diet makes a lot of sense in, uh, in insulin resistance. So again, that's not a, not a surprise. And similarly with, uh, with inflammation, I mean, most disease now is thought to be inflammatory, isn't it? I mean, uh, atherosclerosis, type 2 diabetes, even mental illness now is thought to be a, an inflammatory condition. And, um, you know, inflammation is associated with a whole bunch of, uh, of different, uh, different diseases. And um, I'm not going to talk about inflammation because I'm going to leave that to, uh, to the guru. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, uh, Steve Finney is going to talk about inflammation, its role in, uh, in chronic disease and uh, reversal by nutritional uh, ketosis. So I'll leave that to, uh, to the expert. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, I hope that sort of kept you up to date a little bit with, uh, with ha what's happening in uh, ketogenic and chronic disease. I just, uh, before uh, Rod rudely interrupts me, I want to uh, <laughs> just talk a little, uh, just briefly mention about our, our research study at uh, La Trobe University. Um, we, have, we are doing a, uh, a study on the efficacy of the Defeat Diabetes uh, app program um, over 12 months and uh, we are looking for your assistance. So if you are a GP who would like to be involved in this study which will get you uh, CPD points and um, uh, we will get uh, both yourselves and, and your patients free access to, uh, to the Defeat Diabetes program, 
we're looking for, for GPs to uh, refer um, patients into the, into the study. Uh, I know a number of you have already signed up for that, but uh, the uh, PhD student who's working on that is here, Despina, who's in the front row here, and uh, any GPs who are interested in uh, enrolling their, their patients, uh, you don't have to do much, you just have to treat them uh, normally and just uh, send, us the, uh, send us the results and uh, so we can show that, uh, hopefully show that a program such as the one we're, we're running, which is a low carb uh, ketogenic type uh, program is, if, is uh, efficacious in the management of uh, type 2 diabetes. So um, the spinner will be around uh, after this talk. If you'd like to come down and, and talk to her about uh, potentially being involved, involved in the study, that will be fantastic. So thanks for your time.